Well, hello, boys and girls. It's uh, the Monday after the honeymoon weekend, honeymoon, honeymoon, anniversary weekend. Got home from uh, Orlando yesterday afternoon, did some recovery because the fat boy hasn't moved much in the last two years, let's be honest, because of there's a thing that's been going on. Um, and so this is my first time doing some serious distance. You walk five, six miles a day and <laughs> thought I was gonna die. <laughs> Well, we made it, we had a good time, had too much to drink every day, which was our goal. Uh, and some of you joined us for the live streams from there. Uh, we had a blast. So a couple of you even said, I can't believe your wife lets you do that. My wife loves those live streams. She hums, loves hanging out with you guys too. So uh, we had a lot of fun uh, and, and some of you even bought the drinks. So appreciate that. A couple updates and then we're gonna go on to put on a really cool uh, at Van Black part that I got that I've been wanting. Uh, we're gonna do the dash. So we'll be back in just a minute. So I did my, you guys are gonna laugh, I did my last thing to the chopper before I leave. I leave for Sturgis on July the 30th. And I said I wasn't, first I said I wasn't even gonna buy this bike before I got back from Sturgis. I bought it from a buddy of mine so it wouldn't go anywhere. Um, and then I went ahead and bought it. And, and he brought it over and stuff and whatnot. And then I said, well, I'm not gonna throw any money at it. I'm gonna mess with it to get back from Sturgis. And I didn't do that. So far I've put a battery in it. I bought a tank for it. I have removed 17,000 spikes off of it. That's fine, that doesn't cost anything. Uh, I've replaced the starter. I've replaced the starter relay. Um, and I still just get a loud click when I have the start button. But you'll be happy to know that I took a lot of your advice and um, just jumped lines everywhere. You know what I mean? I tried the, the negative to the frame. I tried um, uh, the, the from the relay to the starter. Uh, and I still get the nice loud click. And it is the solenoid clicking, by the way. It's not the, somebody said it's the starter relay. No, it's not. It's the solenoid you can actually feel clicking. Um, but it's not spinning up the starter. So we have really one of two things. We have either a bad starter or a piece of shit battery. <laughs> and I'll tell you my thoughts. I believe it's a piece of shit battery. I bought this starter... Um, the Relay is a brand new, uh, I can't remember what brand, but one of those well-known, I can't remember what brand was it? It wasn't B-Twin, it was, anyway. The Relay seems to be doing its job, and the, the solenoid is kicking in hard. I mean, like, it's lots of juice going to it. Well, not, it doesn't take much, right? Solenoid takes nothing. Nine-volt battery probably kick a solenoid in. Um, but then it's not spinning up. So here's my thoughts. I don't think it's a bad starter. I think it's a bad battery. The reason why is it's doing, <laughs> unfortunately, exactly the same thing it was doing with the old starter in it. I mean, solenoid's clicking, not spinning up. So when I got this bike, the battery that was in it was completely dead, flat, whatnot, and had been for years. So I bought a brand new battery, but I went the cheap route. And I believe it, the batteries doesn't have the ass it needs to kick this thing over. I believe that's what it is. So I'm not doing, oh, and I, by the way, I put a direct button on, this, on, this, on the solenoid itself. So um, as you can see, did that today. Do, do, do. Y'all need one of them if you don't have one. I mean, we're talking three screws to go ahead and put a direct starter button on there in case you have relay problem and this, that, and the other. Um, so, did that. So, I'm going to have that anyway. I wanted to do it anyway. But I, I truly believe that this is this is just a crap battery. It doesn't have the juice I need to spend a motor over. Um, you guys let me know if you disagree or whatnot. Uh, from there, I think what I'm going to do is, when I get back from Sturgis, I'm going to try one more battery. I'm gonna get. An, an, I'm gonna go to the friggin' dealer, maybe even. I don't know. I won't. I'm not. I'm not I'll probably buy Yuasa from JP, and throw a good known battery in it, and because uh, this one even says it's charged up. But uh, who knows, right? And good, put a good battery in it, and we'll try that. And if that don't do it, then I guess we got to actually pull the starter back out of it. Friggin' great. Um, and uh, and bench test the starter. I should have done it before I put it in. No, I didn't. I just trusted that a brand new DB Electric bought from DB Electric would be fine. Which is why I still think that it's okay. Anyway, now on to the thing that we actually care about today. Um, is this cool little dash bit. So mine is a 2021 Ultra Limited and it has some geezer glide stuff that we're changing out to make the bike less geezer glide. So we already have the Van Black stretch rear end. We have a cool stainless two into one turnout that we like a lot. Um, we got the eights, we did the stereo, yada yada. No, normally I don't just throw money at a bike like this, but this was my CBO that I gave to my wife. And then when I bought this to replace that, 
I'm just making it mine a bit. Um, still got to get some some wheels. Um, anyone know anyone out there? Let me know. RC components don't answer me. Uh, well, yeah, we'll leave that alone. So, um, do do do. So what we got here is we got the old man Geezer Glide dash. I don't use this. This is for your CB, your your headset, your wired headset, that whole deal. And I don't I don't use that. So. Uh, and I'm not a fan of the old-fashioned gas door deal. So what we have here, I'm going to show you in a second, a new toy. And Van Black, being the glorious SOBs that they are, sent me this. And inside here, of course, we have, you know, some hardware. This is not a super exciting bit, so let me just toss that aside. I'm going to toss this aside. And new rubber, uh, what do you call them, isolators, whatever. They run along the side of the dash. They don't scratch up your tank. Uh, and inside here we have, they always do a good job on their packaging. It is nicely secured and whatnot. We have a brand new denim black, not denim black, I'm sorry, vivid black dash. So let me go ahead and swap that out real quick or I'm gonna, sorry, cut it open first and we'll show you what I'm, what I'm talking about. All right, so you can see here, what we have is an entirely new dash panel that is gonna replace, you know, the chrome geezer bit. And you can see here that the paint is perfect. No orange peel at all. I am pretty nutty about that stuff. So she's perfect and it's gonna make the bike look a lot better. Even though my bike is black and chrome, you don't want a chrome <laughs> full dash panel because you'd just be going on the road like, you know, in a blind. That's why even Harley, you know, they black out this panel and this thing's, an issue sometimes but that's gonna be a little bit better you certainly don't want a chrome one i know they make them i don't know if van black makes a chrome one but i know there are companies out there that make just like this but all chrome i don't know about that i feel like <laughs> i feel like you're gonna have some issues if you ride in south florida like i do every day so this is not a hard job first i gotta pull off the seat and there's like just a few screws and some whatnot but we'll get to it it is going to change it out also for a like cvo style pot you know gas cap so it's not like there's a big plastic one there um, let me get started. I gotta pull seats off, whatnot, and uh, we'll have some fun. So, I got the seat off, and I don't do really install videos because I feel like either that you've worked on bikes long enough that you watch me do it because I screw up a lot and it's funny, okay, or you're brand new to working on your bike and so you need a lot of help. That's fine. There are better channels for that. <laughs> Like, for example, I'm like, so what socket tools do we need? Are there instructions? Sure, I'm sure there are instructions. I'm sure they're online, they're probably in the box. But I feel that instructions are for people with zero imagination. So I have just gone back and forth to the toolbox 87 times to find that a 3-8 socket is what I need to get this panel off. And of course, a goddamn giant lawnmower is now running outside my door. Oh, and now it went away. Anyway, so far I need a 3-8 socket, and uh, what size is this? T-handle. Uh, 532nd for the Allen bolt on the front. We'll just, we're gonna wing it, you know? Oh, gas cap probably has to come off, just guessing. All right, we'll, we'll, I'll be back. One thing I will say about these South Florida landscaping companies, it's such a big business down here. To be competitive, it's cheaper to send you like, so for example, it's a lot cheaper to get your ga grass cut and your pool maintained down here because there's so much competition and we do it year round. As a result, the fun thing is, dudes cut grass at about 87 mile an hour. <laughs> like the dude over there on the, on the, what do you call him, the stand up? What do you call them things? Anyway, he's doing, he's gotta be in ninth gear. I mean, just woo, NASCAR and around the, uh, around the bushes over there, that's fun. So um, I digress. So the 532nd Allen bolt is up here at the front. I'm sure this is the same as a street glide and a road glide. And I don't know. Uh, so up here, and then you got the three eighths, was it? Yeah, three eighths nut bolt. Sorry, bolt right here. There's like a captive kind of jobby there. So that bolt comes out, and then that comes out, and then don't be afraid. You just pull up. See, I just pull, already pulled it off. There's a rubber grommet pretty much holding it on there. And then if you don't have an ultra, then you don't have this mess that'll be under here. But I do. So we'll uh, we'll take that off and uh, see what sort of. I'm sure I'm not going to have issues. This is idiot proof and I'm an idiot. So even I can do it. So let's see under here We got drainage lines and 
Lots of goodness. Got that there. By the gas inlet, there's a little rubber hose that pulls off. And little clippy jobs. It's a techno turn. A clippy job. There we go. That's off of there. Why are you like that? This one's, there's a breather line that's folded in on top of itself and that's done. And then, oh, this guy is unique to the Ultra. That, that uh, headset socket, where the hell does that plug in? Glorious, let's, uh, let's set things on the wife's CVO. And uh, let me trace that. Basically, I'm sure there's a plug, I just gotta find it. It's down in there somewhere. Here comes NASCAR. High speed lawn mowing. So trace this down. I mean, some of you might choose to take the plug out and then stick the plug somewhere under the seat or something if you want to use a headset, but I know I'm never going to use a wired headset. So yes, one of my favorite things to do is to buy a motorcycle with expensive factory options and then pay more money to remove them. We've all done it. Don't give me that crap. But yeah, so I just unplugged the outlet and I'm going to now ditch this. I unplugged something else when I was in there. That was the wrong thing. So I guess I should plug that back in. Oh, fuel pump. Yeah, all right, I'll plug that back in. Before the uh, comments section explodes with joy, yes, I know it's called a fuel sending unit, but you know, you're welcome for that. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta throw them a bone, you know? They, they get all upset if they don't get something to get upset about. Where am I gonna put this now? Woo, little uh, breather line. Yeah, okay. I wonder if there's a place, probably not. Hmm, okay. So that's my only question, which is kind of a stupid one, is there's a little uh, breather line here that was hooked up to the underside of that old dash, which I'm sure just gave it the ability to breathe. Uh, so I don't know if the new one has that. So that's a question I'll have to figure out. If not, make, I mean, I'm sure just being safe and under here is fine, but there actually was a port on the old one. I don't know, we'll see. So uh, from here, it really is idiot proof. I gotta zip tie up these lines. You know the sign of a great shade tree uh, mechanic is um, having zip ties cut, the cut ends all over the floor. That's when you know there's some brilliant self-engineering going on with your garage yoga. I haven't said that in a while because this isn't so much garage yoga because I get to stand. That's the only thing about why this is a great project. This is, I don't even have to crawl around the floor or nothing. So, oh, NASCAR's back. So, to prepare your new dash, you attach the sort of tongue bracket. You could take the one off the factory one, I guess. I don't, I mean, maybe they're not the same length or something. So I don't know, but it includes a new tongue bracket and you need a, uh, what is this, a six? No, three, three millimeter Allen to screw it in there. One thing that I'll point out, and I've seen this in other parts, one thing I like about a Van Black stuff, um, I should have waited to put them in, but they're actual brass, you know, what do you call them? It's a, a receiver, a, a, a blah, blah, blah. What do you, when you actually, you know, what do they call that? Uh, electrically weld it into the plastic. You know what I'm saying? Like there's actually a brass receiver under there. I've seen them before where it's just plastic and you're like driving a screw into plastic and that's not what this is. So also stuff's pretty heavyweight. And if you wanted to see how you can tell when it's a quality part, um, just look and see the way it's actually molded. I mean, their logo's inside. You can see it. it's very thick. The edges are not rough. Woo, you know, I mean, really, you can pick one of these up and compare it to another one and you will see a difference. So, I mean, I'm a fan. Yes, they gave this to me as a gift and the big boss there and I have become pals. As a matter of fact, I'm going to LA for work in a few weeks. And I said, hey dude, could I stop by and say hi while I'm out there? I mean, I gotta go visit some work people and stuff. And, uh, and he was like, really, you'd want to? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. So I talk to the dude all the time who's the big, big boss there to Van Black and hopefully in the future might even get to visit their facilities overseas because my work takes me there a lot and you know they wouldn't care if i spent a couple hours going to visit van black's factory so we'll see about that that could be that could be really cool because i'd kind of like to see you know the paint facilities and stuff i don't know we'll see maybe we'll do that you know in a couple months when people can actually travel far off places again so so the brackets on there i gotta put those rubber grommet whatever you want to call it, uh, so it doesn't scratch a tank. And then that's it. Like we're talking a, a bolt in the back and the, and the Allen screw in the front and done.
So, rubber, always use your rubber. All right, so the rubber's on there. Lines are tucked up under there. That breather I just left sitting nice and straight and pointing up. I, I checked the stock one. There was just a port that went through, but I mean, I don't know what you need that for. But anyway, um, this is the tongue that came with the bracket I installed with their six mil or three millimeter Allen screws and then used the stock bolt to go back in there. It came with a six, I'm sorry, three mil. I keep saying six, three millimeter Allen long screw to go in here. And it might be that it's good for multiple years, but it was too long for mine. So I used a stock one. I mean, that's, you know, it came with a screw, but again, by the time it went through the bracket on the screw, it was touching the tank and wasn't pulling it down all the way. So I just used a stock screw and it went right back in and golden. So again, I did not read the directions. The directions might even say that. <laughs> oh no, my shield's getting hit by my, no, that's right. Um, so now, awesome new gas cap. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, this is, we're real time on this channel. I sure hope there isn't something that was supposed to go on the bottom. There isn't. I'm just kidding with you. I mean, I'm not kidding. I just, pretty sure that's not the case. Ooh. So this probably threads into the stock. Something like that. Yeah, we'll take a look here. So there you have it, there you are. That's nice. That is a huge upgrade from the geezer dash, you know? Which, again, I did sacrifice my my headset jack, which is only on Ultra Classics, Ultra Limiteds, da 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 I don't use that. I'm never gonna use a wired headset. Um, so, not a thing for me, but to back up one of the reasons i did buy an ultra limited because someone's going to say this because i want the wet head motor so the ultra limiteds have radiators and the lowers and you know liquid cooling in the heads and stuff so that's why i chose an ultra limited and then making tons of changes to it that make it more like a street glide special from the factory <laughs> but anyway um so the, the the dash is nice uh this costs 199 i looked it up i thought i had this time for the first time ever the parts 159 bucks just you know unpainted uh, for Vivid Black, it's $40 more. I, I didn't check other colors, but I know they do a million different colors of this, but it might be a couple bucks more if your color's rare or whatnot. But for a Vivid Black one, $199. Um, and then it comes with either a black or chrome gas cap. So 200 bucks, new dash with a new gas cap if you want black. Uh, even if you have a blacked out bike, I don't know what your dash might look like, but if it's kind of old school looking, you could throw that dash on your white bike that's got a blacked out motor and get the vivid black one for 199 it doesn't have to be painted to match your paint you can go with black if your motor's blacked out something to think about so yeah so there i am as you can see i'm going black and chrome and that's what she be everywhere uh but i really like it it took me honestly now i'm futzing with the damn camera and everything but it was maybe if you didn't have a camera to mess with i mean talking all in 30 minutes on a, a street glide, road glide, whatever, you don't even have to mess with the, uh, where's that plug that goes down into the seat for the, for the headset jack. You don't have that. So you're talking a bolt, an Allen screw. There you go. <laughs> There's the whole process. And that is, uh, that's a nice upgrade. She looks good. So sorry the bike's not pulled out to look nice. You'll see a whole lot of it soon as I start to get ready to go and load up for the rally and everything. There's the Van Black stretch for, that's the Dominator fender with the stretch bags if you're curious about that. That's their lit license plate frame. And then the tail lights, it comes with either red or smoke tail lights that look like CVO lights. But as you can see, just like I have on my wife's bike, I put the, the Custom Dynamics CVO tail lights in those. Um, hoping to get the new Custom Dynamics light when it comes out for the tour pack. That's a an Amazon special that I'm a little iffy on, <laughs> if I'm honest. It's smoked, but the smoke's a little brown and it wasn't necessarily cheap either so i'm waiting for customer dynamics to come out with theirs because i already have their lowers these guys are custom dynamics so um anyway maybe up at the rally if it's out maybe i'll get it put on i know i'm going to visit them on august the 4th they're going to be at the rally at exit 55 this is custom dynamics i'm going to visit them uh on august the 4th in the morning before the rally even really kicks in so i can say hi and meet the contact that I've been working with the whole time. I don't know if she'll let me put her on camera, but she's really cool. So I'd like to be able to say hi to her on camera. We'll see. Uh, and then again, I should be going to visit at Van Black probably in mid July. Work is taking me there anyway. The facility's like 20 minutes from where I'm going to be. So it'd be kind of a jerk thing for me to not say hi and, you know, 
howdy do and see if they'll let me put them on camera. I don't know, that's their choice, but I wanna at least stop by, say howdy and look around. The, I think they have a warehouse there and a, and a showroom and that'd be kind of cool to look around. So, and then I'll just, you know, I'll just snag things and stick them in my jeans as I walk out. <laughs> maybe a new fender for when i get a 21 on this thing i'll just walk out with that um but yeah that's it so take care of each other out there we'll talk real soon bye